Hello. Thank Hola. you. There's three of us missing. The three that matter are here. <gasps> Did so I just say that? Wow. You're so naughty. That, I didn't mean that. You're starting off real. That's it. <laughs> Who wants to set up the premise of Scorpion for us? Scorpion is the tale of uh, a load of geniuses who try and fight or try and uh, get together to uh, prevent a lot of high stakes, high risk security issues going wrong. Uh, and um, in that process, we join uh, different characters on the outside world who help Someone's overcoming fun. those challenges that ge um, geniuses face. Now, here's a question for you. If Walter and company are such geniuses, why are they struggling to pay the bills? Why are they doing odd jobs? Are we going to find this out? With genius comes um, weakness in some areas of life. And, uh, Socially. Right? Yeah, there, there are problems adapting to other people who aren't geniuses, and they're a lot less geniuses than are, there are non-geniuses, so what's the assimilation. What's the statistic? It's like one in a million or... or well, considering you have an IQ of 197, which is 30 points higher than Albert Einstein, that's quite a burden to carry. So your social graces, I mean, you're, you're lacking in those, and so are most of the geniuses right. yeah, uh, the at, the, at that IQ level. So everybody on our, our team has got quite a few uh, odd characteristics, and they have a hard time dealing with the the normal world. Right, and this is based on a real person's life, so there is a real person named Walter O'Brien who does have an IQ of 197, and the beginning of our pilot opens up in, what, a small farm town in Ireland. Ireland. We're looking for Scorpion, and who's a uh, who's a computer hacker. Hacker, and, and lo and behold, we find out it's a... A little boy, instead ten year old, of... Right. Um, Elias Cabell. And how is Walter with the ladies? Take Paige, for instance. Well, it's interesting because you start off uh, the pilot with him trying to break up with a lady and instead of telling her honestly why and trying to smooth it over like you might do, um, he gets out a piece of paper and he explains and he writes down little reasons why. And they're all very honest, but they're quite cutting. Um, so his interaction with a lot of ladies is that way because he sees things from a very honest point of view. It's very streamlined. And as a consequence, he misses the, the tact involved. The sensitivity um, chip. Exactly. But no, you guys have there's see good chemistry in, in the pilot. How long do you think it's going to be until there's like first base action? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Playing baseball in this show. Oh, you need to you need to uh, you need to know what that means. See what? Yeah, I need to bring an English translator. He doesn't, he he doesn't know. He doesn't. What does this mean? Explain it to him. They have cricket. There is no first base. So they do right home. <laughs> feeling we each just other run up. down, up and down, feeling and up and down. Feeling right? each other up, he says. Feeling each other up. Do you mean do you mean metaphorically? You mean <laughs> mentally? The, the feeling up. Talking of about the sex. Joust of the. Wow, you just going for it. I mean, I You're really getting into it. Huh? Um, I think there's you know there's 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 mileage in the show, and I think once you take off all the clothes, mentally, then there's a lot less to pique your interest in. And Robert, do you feel sort of like the father in this cast? You know, you're the seasoned veteran here and imparting wisdom on the youngins. I feel like Ed Asner, Lou Grant on the Mary Tyler Moore show. <laughs> you don't even know what that is, do you? I've never heard of it. Of, of course you have. Yes, you have. So that shows you exactly who I feel like. Cantankerous. <laughs> Sarcastic. These guys, you know, it's 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 a lot like that. But it is like a little bit like hurting, you know, puppies. <laughs> These not. guys, yeah, it is. You got to kind of corral them up and push them in the right direction and show them the the little treat over here. Maybe they'll run over there to that. You know, you kind of move them around like that. It's it's a lot to manage these guys. I'm actually probably you know the lowest IQ in the room, and yet I'm the smartest guy. You know what I'm saying? But, oh, you're now you're talking about your character. Yeah, well, in real life, too, well, yeah, in real life, I do have the highest I didn't, IQ. I didn't really catch the, the yeah, transition yeah. from you as nah, the actor. It's a uh, non sequitur. I just <laughs> it's, go it's all a beautiful over the Do you know actually bring it back to uh, the to the topic about the relationship with Paige? I think there's a very the very big difference between how he normally relates, or Walter would normally relate to her. Uh, a girl and how he's relating to Paige, and a lot of that is to do with his um, his interest in her kid, mm. purely right. platonically, and how they mirror each other. Um, well, my uh, kid reminds reminds you of you when you were young, and you. I have a connection to you just simply based on the fact that you've kind of opened up a whole world to me by 
I didn't even know about that existed, that my son might in fact actually be a genius and not as much as a what? Yes, no, absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's pretty cool how they find out too because she just thinks his kid's playing with a salt and pepper shaker yep. and lo and behold, he's playing jazz. Which is a huge moment for her. It's you big. Know. What's it like playing a mom? This is your first time playing an actual mother of a child. What is that like? You know, I've never worked with children on set, so you definitely have to kind of... I hear they're always a joy. <laughs> <laughs> he actually is lovely. Oh, he's a lovely kid, he's yeah. He's really sweet, but he, you know, he's a kid, so just like anything else, you kind of have to... Just like he feels he has to keep us in check, I have to keep this, this sweet boy, Riley, in check sometimes. It was funny, Did, can you remember the scene with the salt shakers? Because all, pretty yes, much all our interaction really... with him was him just staring at this salt shaker and a pepper shaker for very much like two or three days. And the kid, <laughs> the kid would, was so focused and into it, <laughs> he, he wouldn't remove his face or his head from the salt shakers. <laughs> so you'd kind of be talking to him, and he'd be speaking to you as well. And he's like, I don't know. And then somebody else, the prop guy, would He come was a little, bit, a little bit more kooky around me. Let's be honest. No. He had to share all of his little set crushes and... I, you know, being the motherly figure that I was, I guess he felt very comfortable to sort of... I won't, I won't, I won't expose him in that way. <laughs> Catherine, sing us out. Our theme song is Scorpion. Scorpion. Rock me like a hurricane. Scorpion. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, no, it's by Scorpion. Oh, it's by Scorpion. Rock me like a hurricane. Oh, yeah. How does that song go, by the way? Yeah, I am. <laughs> Rock me like a hurricane. <laughs> 